behind the camera, we have Lori, and we want to thank you for joining us again today for another episode of Dolphin Quest Live here at the Hilton Waikoloa Village. Um, you guys are going to be joining us today for a few really cool topics. We're going to talk a little bit about conservation, how we do our part to help protect dolphins um, all across the world, how you guys can do your part to help protect dolphins all across the world, and then we're going to wrap it up with a little bit of moving and grooving to get you guys on your feet this morning as well. Um, we do have Lori behind the camera today, so if you're watching at home and you have any questions that you want to ask us about anything we're talking about today, please feel free to comment in and if we have a moment, we'll swipe through those and get some going for you. We'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I'm going to take the lead today, you guys, and first of all, thank you for being here, especially during some trying times. Um, we are going to continue to be here for our dolphins each and every single day, and we're here for you as well. So we are so glad to be able to bring this to you live so that you can join us on our day to day uh, and hopefully continue to fall in love with these dolphins each and every single morning. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we care for our dolphins this morning. Um, being a dolphin here at Dolphin Quest is the best. Not only are you provided top-notch health care, a pristine environment to live in, but you're also given the best food available. So what we've got today, you guys, are two types of fish that we're providing for our dolphins on a daily basis. Um, now our dolphins eat more than just herring and capelin, uh, but these are really good examples of a diverse selection of options that these guys are going to be consuming throughout the day. So herring's gonna be more of your like meat and potatoes, a very hearty fish. And then capelin is going to be more of a lean meat. Um, it's also gonna have a lot of water quality in it as well. Dolphins, like us, are mammals. So they drink fresh water, not salt water. And they're gonna get all the fresh water they need from the fish that they eat. So all of that hydration that they're getting is going to be coming from the food that we're able to provide for them. And then what they're able to catch out in the ocean on their own naturally, right? Um, so. In talking about this food here today, you guys, one of the very important things that we make sure we're supporting here at Dolphin Quest Hawaii is sustainably sourced seafood. Um, now, many of you may have heard this word before, um, but how many of you knew that that's something that you can do to help have a direct impact on the health of our wild dolphin population? Here we purchase from uh, resources that are sustainably sourcing their fish, which means not only are they caught in a way that's not harming the environment, it's not taking too many fish from the ocean at once, and it's also not um, dragging nets across the bottom, uh, disrupting that ecosystem out there as well. If we take too many fish from the ocean, we won't have enough healthy adult fish to repopulate that fish stock. And as dolphins are opportunistic feeders, they're going to be looking for these fish every single day. Now, um, a dolphin out in the ocean is going to be searching for that food throughout the daytime. Some dolphins hunting in the shallows, some dolphins going out a little bit deeper to hunt that food as well, just depending on their ecotype and what type of dolphin they might be as well. And they're opportunistic feeders. So what this means is that when they find that food, they're going to eat as much of it as they can because they might not know where their next meal is coming from. Um, being here at Dolphin Quest Hawaii, our dolphins don't have to worry about that absolutely at all. These guys are going to get the finest restaurant quality hand sorted seafood every single day. And being sure that you purchase that sustainably sourced seafood just like we do is a way that you can directly help protect those dolphins in the ocean. So as you're at home and you're embracing that social distancing during this time, if seafood is still part of uh, your daily diet and something you're bringing home to feed yourself and your family, be sure to look for a marking on the package that will label it as sustainably sourced. Um, if you're not sure if that seafood is sustainably sourced, you can always go on the Monterey Bay Aquarium website. They've pioneered an app for your smartphone called Seafood Watch. And if you know the type of fish that you're trying to consume, where it's caught, any of those variables that you might know about which seafood you're trying to eat, you can then look it up on their Seafood Watch app and see if you are about to purchase sustainably sourced seafood. Erica, can we say hi to Sandy, Tina, and Forrest? Hi, Sandy, Tina, and Forrest. You think we can I'm, let him meet a dolphin? Absolutely, that's exactly where I was headed. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna send you into the water with Sarah, Sandy, Tina, Forrest, get on in there. Hello, hi, everybody. Sarah, and this is Halia, she's a 12-year-old female. She's here. And we wanna just talk 
to you a little bit about how our animals here are just the most amazing ambassadors for their wild counterparts. Dolphin Quest does so much to help wildlife, not only on a global, but a local level as well. And so for example, here on the Big Island, we partner with the Stranding Network, and once a year, we invite those volunteers to come on in and learn how to provide supportive care to a dolphin that might need assistance. So for example, they would come in, learn how to hold them in a position similar to this, from here, we can learn how a healthy breath should sound like, how often they breathe. They can learn how to keep them moistened down with a wet sponge or cloth. Something else that's really neat, you can feel their heartbeat right in between their flippers. Lori, have you ever felt a dolphin heartbeat? I have not. Want to come feel? Yes. So their heart rate is very similar to ours when resting. It is about 60 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and place it right there. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> Good girl, Helene. <laughs> and all of this is such valuable resources for them. So when they do get calls for strandings out in the ocean, um, they're going to have the skills in their tool belt to help them. Now, not always it's just adults or um, older animals that are stranding. Sometimes we see newborns or juveniles as well. And something really cool that Dolphin Quest has helped pioneer with is with a lot of the data that is currently known about the growth and development of bottlenose dolphins. Because we share such amazing relationships with their, our moms here, we've been able to get really close and learn not only the growth and development, we know how often baby dolphins uh, need to eat or how often they breathe, we even can know, based from our moms, how to collect um, voluntary milk samples. So we can create synthetic milk formulas and know the type of nutrition that the dolphins will need at the certain stages in their growth, which you can see right here. Everything we do with our dolphins is voluntary. And so it's really awesome opportunity to not only learn so much about them, but we can then support conservation and research in initiatives out in the ocean as well. So we now, have some questions, Sarah. Yeah. Um, Forrest wants to know how Nahele's doing. Oh, he's doing amazing. That's your little brother, yeah. And then Ray wants to know if we can do a fetal ultrasound. Ooh, we will have to talk to some of our leads today, but I'm sure that's something we could do in the future, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna bring it on over to Erica, who's gonna talk a little bit more about what you guys can do from your day-to-day um, -day lives at home right now to help conservation. Awesome. All right, guys, so we talked a little bit about the food and ways we're able to care for our dolphins here at Dolphin Quest Hawaii. And um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what you can do to directly affect the health of the wild dolphin population as well. Thanks, Rick. And speaking of fetal ultrasounds, guys, if you wanted to take a look at a fetal ultrasound, please feel free to check out our YouTube page where we have footage of Kona, one of our new moms, um, receiving a fetal ultrasound. And it is incredible. Uh, it, it was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. Um, so please head on over there and check that out. Um, now we talked about sustainably sourced seafood, you guys. As you all know, dolphins love to eat fish, right? Yeah, that's a big part of their day, a big part of their diet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Kelly really loves to eat fish, you guys. This is it. Yes, ma'am. Um, so Kelly, uh, here, is 35 years old. Um, and she is one of our moms here as well. Um, now, one of the things we love to educate guests on is what they can do at home to help protect dolphins in the ocean. Now, I don't know how many of you knew, dolphins have a, anywhere from 72 to 104 teeth that they will have for the duration of their lives. However, dolphins don't actually use those teeth to chew. So, if you take a look right here as Pele just gobbles this fish down, oh, that thing's gonna go right down the hatch. So, being that they have all of these fish, they're still only swallowing that food whole, right? Now that being said, if you tuned into our Facebook Live yesterday, you saw that dolphins can swim about 18 miles an hour at their top speeds. So I want you to imagine if you were a dolphin in the ocean, eating at 18 miles an hour, and you didn't chew your fish at all. You don't chew that fish at all, no way. It could be really easy to accidentally mistake something silver in the water, like these fish. Could be a granola bar wrapper, a soda can, plastic or pollution, um, that unfortunately was used by humans. Oh, that shouldn't be there in the first place, right? Very easy ways for us to make those changes at home, even during this time, are to choose options that aren't, pa ooh, aren't packaged in single-use plastics or to do things as simple as taking those grocery bags to the store, um, using your own reusable items when you go to shop, utensils, silverware, things like that, right? That way dolphins in the ocean only have to worry about gobbling down fish for their next meal. We're getting lots of questions. One question is from Forrest that says, how do we keep the dolphins in 
in interactions without guests visiting? That's a very good question. So one of the ways that we can um, continue to provide these guys with that top-notch care, uh, mental stimulation, physical exercise, and to keep them interacting with you all is through platforms just like this Facebook Live here, right? Um, so we can have you guys join us every day to learn a little bit more about our family here, to get to say aloha to them and meet them individually. And then in the future, I do believe we have a few new things cooking so that you guys can have a more personalized experience from the comfort of your own home, but still get to meet dolphins just like that. And we have so many people writing in that they've been to see us and they've connected with a dolphin here. Oh. Yeah, and they said to say hi to the trainers as well. Oh my goodness. Well, from Pele and I, guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, I'm going to send it back over to Sarah, who is going to give you another tip on what you can do as you're experiencing this time of social distancing um, to continue to protect the wildlife, literally, in your own backyard. Aloha again, guys. So yes, right now, while we, while we are practicing some of that social distancing, you might experience yourself wanting to spend a little bit more time in nature. Um, and while you're doing that, you might encounter wildlife. So like here in Hawaii, we have a ton of marine life. But did you know that all marine mammals are protected by the Marine Mammal Protection Act? So with that, it does state that you can't get within 50 yards of any marine mammal and there's no touching, harassing, or feeding them. So that is why it's so important that there are places like Dolphin Quest here because we do create a safe environment where our dolphins, we know them, we know their personalities, we know their behavior and how to read it. And so it creates an amazing environment for you to be able to come in and experience such an incredible animal. And what's also awesome that everything they do with us is voluntary. So it does create a truly incredible interaction. <laughs> oh my goodness, Halia, you have so many. So the kids have been sitting at home for a while. Do you want to get do a little workout with them? Oh, yes. Follow All right. us up into the shallows. We're going to get you moving and grooving. Okay. Are you ready, Halia? Let's start. Let's get jumping. All right, All right guys. Join us from home. Stand on up. Get on those feet, you guys. You can start to jump with us. Jump up and down. Let's do it. Yeah. To continue on, everyone put your hands in there. Go ahead, raise the roof. There we go. Nice work. And then if you are really in the mood for some dancing, go ahead and get those wiggles out, you guys. Let's do a little jig. All right, take it over. All right, then bring your right hand up. Stretch it out. Give it a little bit.